and we begin with the number of confirmed deaths in the last 24 hours. That number was 232 as of Tuesday afternoon. However, the state is saying that not all of these deaths reported yesterday happened in a 24 hour period. 95 deaths were added to the coronavirus death toll yesterday after a lab reviewed death certificates from the past three weeks and attributed the cause of death to COVID-19. In total, we have lost 2,700 members of the Michigan community to the coronavirus. Across the state, we now have almost 33,000 confirmed cases, and that is an increase of 967 new cases in the last 24 hours. As always, the new updates on case count come daily about mid-afternoon from Michigan, so we'll bring you those latest numbers as soon as we get them, both here on the air and, of course, on clickondetroit.com on our mobile app. Now to a look at the coronavirus cases nationally. Officials in California are saying that two people died of COVID-19 on February 6th and 17th, making them the earliest known victims of the pandemic in the United States. And this may shift the timeline of the coronavirus outbreak to weeks earlier than previously believed. Here at home, the Wayne State University Physicians Group has launched a virtual clinic to care for people diagnosed with the coronavirus. And for more on the economic impact here in Detroit, the Detroit Land Bank Authority is facing a $5.8 million shortfall, and that's a funding shortfall. And we've learned that layoffs and contract terminations will impact staff. Founders Brewing Company just announced that the mass temporary layoffs of 163 employees will occur on May 3rd, impacting employees in Detroit and in Grand Rapids. Also today, Governor Whitmer will host a live news conference on the state's response to the coronavirus at 3 o'clock this afternoon. But first, let's get to Rod Maloney. He takes a closer look at this debate over what reopens and when here in Michigan. Yeah, good afternoon, Rhonda. You know, it's a situation where the governor had said this week that she was going to roll out her options as to how she wants the state to reopen, uh, possibly as early as May 1st. She has told us some things around it, like she wants it to be a rolling layered layout, uh, but she's also not given us some specifics. But last night she went on uh, MSNBC all in with Chris Hayes, and she had this conversation about the businesses she believes are going to open last. As we're doing the analysis, it's a rigorous undertaking to make sure that we get this right, because I think if we can all agree on something unanimously is that we don't want a second wave of COVID-19 to threaten yes. our lives and threaten our, our healthcare institutions. And so the last things that come online are going to be the ones that are so intimately public facing, um, especially if there's not the appropriate PPE available. and. I don't know what the situation is in Georgia, but I know that we are grabbing every PPE we have for our first responders, for our nurses, for our doctors. And then we will talk about how do we ensure that businesses have PPE for their employees. Now she talked about uh, hair salons. She talked about massage parlors uh, and, and, and other uh, businesses like that that are going to be last movie theaters was another one. Let's take a look at some of the other things she said about this issue. Um, the, the, the considerations for her infection rates, testing availability, hospital capacity, best practices for uh, social distancing. And then she went on uh, at other points saying that she's going to really be looking at indoor versus outdoor work, the number of employees, the proximity interaction of those employees and also with the public. So See, these are some of the things that uh, she has hinted at uh, in terms of rolling out her plan. The question is whether she will do it this afternoon. We thought she might do it on Monday. She did not. The hope is, and in, in many businesses around the state, that she will give us some guidance today. And so we'll certainly be watching and waiting for what she has to say come 3 p.m. Reporting live from West Bloomfield, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Right, because if there are some businesses that can reopen by the stay home order, if they want to be prepared. That's right. All right, Rod, thank you.